Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tesla weekly video for today. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. So far it's a pretty special episode today as well because one, we've reached over 40,000 subscribers on the channel so thank you very much for all the support. If you're new here, welcome. Really appreciate all of you, especially today even more because today I'm turning 30. Yes, the big 3-0. I'm leaving my 20s, entering the 30s. My back already hurts, can't really see straight. But uh, yeah, anyways, thank you very much for all the support you've given me throughout the last couple of years, especially also this year. So thank you very much. If you're new here, we do Tesla weekly videos where I basically recap what happened with Tesla throughout the week. I obviously cover lots of other companies on this channel as well. So if you're new here, maybe hit that subscribe button. The road to 50 and 100K is starting right now. If you want more team even further, do check out the links down in the description and the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. And the guy that clicked and was the 40,000 subscriber, a cookie is on your way. Let's first start off with a fun thing here, which is the Cyber Hammer. So Tesla is not a car company. It's actually an e-commerce store. So the Cyber Hammer costs $700. 800 units were built, sold out pretty quickly. That means that Tesla generated $560,000 in revenue just by selling some cyber hammers. Moving on to things a bit more serious. So Tesla weekly China insured numbers came in at 10,900. Yes, it's a drop week over week. But as you can see, year over year and year over two years, it is much better. So maybe, maybe we're now trying to catch up because it has been quite a slow start of the quarter and of the year as well. Moving on to Tesla Giga Shanghai wholesale sales, that was 62,167 for the first month of the quarter. Moving to Europe, Germany, we've covered some countries last week, now another big country here, Germany, 1,637 Tesla sales. Of course, some extreme weakness there. There's no incentives anymore despite the 0% financing. There is literally very negative sentiment towards EV. Germany, a very, very heavy ICE vehicle industry, despite them letting a lot of Chinese manufacturers enter their markets. For some reason, Tesla is not really the best friend there. And you can clearly see this right here. From January to April, BV registrations are down 10.8% year over year, while Tesla is down 36.3% over the same period. Again, pretty strange when you invite a company like Tesla to open up a gigafactory in your country, making sure that a lot of people get well-paid jobs. Then you've got protests, you've got extreme lobbying against EVs, lack of education. I mean, I think Tesla should be doing a better job next time they choose such a location. As for Tesla sales in Europe for this year, so Tesla sales in Europe are down 7.5% year to date. We've seen this already because we cover this each and every week. We know that there is some extreme weakness overall for EVs. The sentiment right now is pretty negative. More people are more interested in hybrids. Why is that? Because they're a bit more familiar with how these cars operate. Plus, like I said, there is a lack of information, education when it comes to EVs. In Europe, there's also lack of infrastructure. Moving to the UK. So the number for April there was 1,352 Tesla sales. Now with regards to the supercharging aspects, so this news came out. BP came to buy Tesla supercharging sites for US expansion. Company's EV arms plans to spend $1 billion to grow its network and wants fire Tesla workers too. We know that BP and Tesla, there was already an announcement, I believe, last year or so. So it says here, BP is aggressively looking to acquire real estate to scale our network, which is a heightened focus following the recent Tesla announcement. It plans to spend a billion dollars by 2030, half of it within the next two to three years to install over 3,000 charging points across the US. A key part of the strategy is building large scale hub with 12 or more chargers that it calls Giga Hubs. If there are stranded real estate partners who are looking for someone to call, they should feel free to pick up the phone and call me or look me up on LinkedIn, the chief executive officer of BP Pulse Americas said in an interview with Bloomberg, which of course is, in my opinion, a good idea for Tesla and the others if Tesla doesn't want to do all the work by themselves. I think partnering up like this makes sense. 
Elon Musk said on Twitter, just to reiterate, Tesla will spend over $500 million expanding our supercharger network to create thousands of new chargers this year. That's just on new sites and expansions, not counting operation costs, which are much higher. Then we've got some unconfirmed news from Chris Zhang, which usually has some good sources. I heard that the Tesla North America has rehired some members of the original supercharging team, which once again confirmed my view. Elon is dissatisfied with the status quo, destroyed the old management, reorganized the team, and let the team operate in the way of a startup. Elon previously said also something like this, if you don't have to add back 10%, you didn't delete enough. Maybe that's what's happening right now at Tesla. Moving on to the Tesla Semi, one of my favorite products from Tesla, so someone spotted one Tesla Semi with Walmart's logo on it and another one with Costco, which means that right now we've got PepsiCo, Costco, Walmart, Cisco and Martin Brower testing out the Tesla Semi. I don't know if Tesla is giving those trucks for free. I highly doubt that. But I mean, we're, we're starting to get there. I know we're only going to get there, I think, in a year and a half or so. These types of pictures and videos are quite promising. Then moving on to some FSD news, so Waymo's account on X tweeted out, our safe and deliberate approach to scaling the Waymo driver is gaining traction, as we're now serving more than 50,000 paid trips every week across three major cities. Thank you to our riders for trusting us to get you to your destinations safely and reliably. To which Brett Winton here from ARK Invest retweeted, Waymo now driving 40,000 miles per day. Tesla doing roughly 15 million FSD miles per day and perhaps 200 million miles daily across the fleet. In war that will be won by data, the company with the largest number of endpoints will win. Which brings me to the next point, another note here from the famous Adam Jonas says here, should Tesla's ongoing restructuring actions be a lesson for other auto companies? Probably yes. Global EV demand has decelerated markedly over the past few quarters taking forecasts for profits and cash flow down with it. At the same time, China's relative dominance in smaller EV pie is increasingly evident. Taken together, these forces have driven a major pullback rescaling of the automotive side of Tesla's business from product offering to footprint plant, Mexico and supporting infrastructure charging. I'll skip the rest here and say, as Tesla continues to shift incremental capex away from the automotive side of the house, and towards the data computing learning robotics side of the house, we see a real chance that the broader industry, legacy players and EV startups alike, will follow. The thing is, I don't really see any legacy player or even EV startup that can do these types of things because one, <laughs> their EVs aren't profitable yet. He then talked about the importance of June 13, so again, with regards to the vote, the payment package, basically sums it up quite quickly here. In 2018, Musk was granted stock option awards for around 304 million Tesla shares at 23.34 strike price if a series of tranches related to revenue earnings and market value were met. 73% of voters approved of Musk's payment package in 2018. By 2022, Tesla had met each tranche. Musk has not exercised any of the options. As of February 2024, Musk owns around 20.5% of Tesla when including the options from the 2018 award. Excluding the options, Musk only owns around 13% of Tesla outright. Tesla is the only firm within Elon Musk related companies, the Musk economy, where he does not have control or blocking minority vote, which in my opinion is a big issue. I'll say this again and again. If somehow, somehow the package gets rejected, I'll probably be out of my position. Maybe not in full, but probably the majority. Last thing here, Energy Digital has ranked Tesla the number one energy storage company in the world. Tesla's energy storage business has never been better, despite only launching its energy storage arm in 2015. As of 2023, the company has an output of 14.7 gigawatt hour in battery energy storage systems. And in my opinion, this will only grow and accelerate. And so right now, looking at the stock this week, the stock is down around 10% or so. This on the daily, by the way, which means that we have now closed the first gap from that day when we went up 15% or so. So that first gap is now closed. The other gap here is, of course, after the earnings report, when we gapped up. Will we make that one? Remains to be seen. To close that, you have to go back under $150. Right now, RSI 
is neutral but has some negative momentum there. We did close the week under the 50 and the 20-day moving average. The 200-day one sits at $203, the 50-day one at $176, and the 20-day one at $172. So overall, I think it's pretty clear, Tesla focusing quite a lot on AI, robotics, FSD, EV demand, not just for Tesla, but throughout the world is not really that high anymore. Even with some incentives, even with some zero financing options, the demand for EVs right now is just not there. Tesla is taking that opportunity to maybe shift some funds away towards something that might actually make their company worth way more in the future than when sentiment switches back towards EVs because interest rates have come down, car financing is now a better option, they might switch back. But currently, this is the sad state, let's say, of EV. Let's wait and see what happens in the future. Of course, the stock will do what the stock will do in the near term, especially after that June 13 event. I think a lot of people don't know how important that date is for the future of this company because, I mean, it's pretty clear. There is here, there's always been a key man risk. If something happens with Elon Musk, I am pretty sure that the stock will crash. If Elon Musk suddenly decides, you know what, Tesla is now just a car company, all the rest AI robotics, stuff like that, I'll start a new company on the site. Then of course, valuation will get slashed by quite a lot. So it's pretty important to vote. In my opinion, voting yes makes sense. Voting no basically means you're okay with your shares crashing down quite heavily. Plus, if you're okay with voting no, I think the fair thing to do is give back all the gains from Tesla stock since 2018. Seems fair, no? Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. And again, thank you very much. I wish you all, that's my birthday wish, I wish you all the very best this year and for the years to come. May the market treat us all quite well. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.